Now joining us on the Young Turks, Governor Don Siegelma, former governor of Alabama. Uh, he is a politician who has honestly been railroaded, in my opinion. In fact, it's not just my opinion. 113 state attorney generals complained about his case, saying that it had significant irregularities, but they're not all. That's not all. Uh, American trial lawyer declared him America's political prisoner number one back in 2008. And uh, to give you a sense of how he was brought up on charges, the prosecutor's husband worked for his political opponent. <laughs> this is an absurd case. Unfortunately, Governor Siegelman is about to head back to jail, and he joins us now on the program. Governor, great to have you with us. For those who are not familiar with the case, can you tell us from the beginning how all of this began in the first place? Jake, thanks. Uh, in the words of a Republican attorney general from Arizona, Grant Woods, uh, who was also John McCain's uh, co-chairman of his national campaign in 2008, Mr. Woods said they couldn't beat Sigelman fair and square, so they targeted him with this prosecution. We have sworn testimony that Karl Rove directed the Department of Justice to pursue me while his best friend's wife, the U.S. attorney, stirred up charges in Alabama, uh, and as you mentioned, while her husband, Carl Rove's best friend, ran my opponent's campaign. You know, th this may have started out as a, as a simple political dirty trick to try to, to try to damage me, but after the election, uh, and by the way, I won my 2002 re-election campaign, but late at night, after midnight, when the lights went out in the courthouse, 5,000 votes were taken from me and given to my opponent. They were illegally certified by Carl Rove's uh, client, the attorney general, the, uh, the following day. Um, and then there was this conference call on which a Republican lawyer was present. She came forward and gave sworn testimony to the House Judiciary Committee that Rove had directed the Department of Justice to pursue me and that the U.S. attorney's husband had said, to the Republicans on the on the conference call, not to worry about Sigelman in 2006 because his wife was going to prosecute me. So that that sets the stage. Um, so but wanna, let me I let me jump in there for one second, Governor. Uh, you know, in, in corruption charges were brought, and we'll get into the specifics of that in a second. But I want the audience to understand why Karl Rove might even care about a governor of Alabama. Well. Uh, at that point, the last couple of Democratic presidents were all popular Southern Democratic governors. So when you look at someone who's a popular governor in Alabama and he's a Democrat, well, they view that as a significant political threat nationwide. Now, that's why you were targeted in 02, you were targeted again. Now, talk to us about the specific corruption charges that uh, they brought against you. What were they well, and why do you think they were wrong? Well, it, it, the, the, the corruption charges are, are absurd. They, they, I was, I was running in 1999. Was uh, running a campaign to establish a lottery in Alabama so we could send all of our kids, poor kids, needy kids, to college for free. Um, the, uh, the, I was raising money for this for the television campaign to, to convince people to vote for the lottery. Uh, one of the people I asked to raise money was a Fortune 500 CEO. He raised $500,000. Later, I reappointed him to the same non-paying part-time board on which he had served through three previous governors. I was the fourth governor to appoint this same guy to this same board. There was the only testimony that sent me to prison was that of a felon a crook, as described by 60 Minutes, who basically sold his testimony so he could stay out of jail. He was facing 40 to 100 years in prison. The government said, make us a deal. We want to make a bigger corruption case against Sigelman. If you tell us what we need to know, we'll recommend no time in prison for you. And that's what he did. Um, the, right. the other thing... I'm they, sorry, they, just they, to jump in there for one more second. You know, the thing that sure. stands out to me is that this is something that's been done in Alabama by Republican and Democratic governors, and nobody ever said a single thing about it before. All of a sudden, when they uh, look to target someone, my God, you put someone on a board. <gasps> you know, look, I, well, I, I don't know there's a show in the country that cares more about political corruption than we do. Okay, but this ain't it. And, and 
to, and of all the unbelievable corruption today on the Young Turks, there's a story about how the Coke, uh, David Koch might have uh, promised Mitt Romney a hundred million dollars if he would put Paul Ryan on the ticket. Okay, we're worried about some guy <laughs> being put on a board in a state which happens every single year in every single state and, and you didn't get anything in return. Believe me, if you had, I'd be the first one on your case. I, well, you're, I'm glad you brought that up. There was no allegation that I that I received a penny of the money myself. It all went to support the education uh, lottery concept. The other thing that convicted me is that the, the judge and I had had a political battle going on for 10 years. But anyway, that, that's another story. But he didn't like me. But then he set the bar so low for the jury that they could have convicted anybody of anything. He said that they could convict me by inference, that they could infer that there was a deal made, not, not that there had to be one proven, not by express, uh, an express agreement or an explicit agreement, but they could infer that there was a deal. And, and that's why we have 113 state attorneys general, the top law professors, and even George Will speaking out saying, this is a dangerous precedent. Because if you can, if prosecutors can pick and choose the targets they want to silence, then anybody, uh, as George Will said, is is at peril if they participate in in politics. Um, so you know, one of the reasons why my spirit is still high and pumped is that uh, that I know that the the Supreme Court eventually is going to get this right. But the other reason, Jake, is that this is this case is not just about me. But you know, this is this is. This is Karl Rove's revenge. Karl Rove is his it's politics by indictment. He took over the Department of Justice, appointed people he wanted as U.S. prosecutors, and set them on a path to destroy people that he didn't want to see, uh, you know, rise to the top. And I'm not the only one that got shot down, but, but you know, I am, I am, you know, being held up as an example of it. But, right. You know, it's. it's I just again, I wanted to jump in there to just make one quick point about a, a, something you were just saying. The Republican uh, U.S. attorney in New Mexico said that Karl Rove pressured him to bring cases on voter fraud, and he said he investigated, 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 and found absolutely no cases. And Karl Rove insisted that he bring cases anyway. And again, this is a Republican U.S. attorney, right? So it's yeah. and, and then if he didn't bring the cases, then they got fired, like you said. So the idea that Karl Rove meddled with the U.S. attorneys is not really in dispute. There's no question he did it. So, but Governor, when I look at that, I, I, I can't believe the Supreme Court didn't review your case. I'm glad you're well, hopeful. Well, Jake, I think they couldn't review my case for a, a couple of reasons. One that. There have been 14 New York Times editorials. There's been a Time magazine on selective prosecution. Harper's has run a bunch of stories. Um, CBS 60 Minutes, two congressional investigations about government misconduct and selective prosecution. If they, if they had taken my case and said foul, then it, it opens that whole Pandora's box, and it all roads lead to Karl Rove. Um, so, you know, my message to your listeners and those who, who will go online and, and read this uh, or listen to this is that, um, you know, this is more, it's more than my freedom that's at stake. It's your freedom and your children's freedom and this country's freedom and restoring our democracy and preserving justice and, and, and restoring justice in this country. You know, it, you know, we should not allow illegal wiretaps or, or, or to, to extract... Uh, um, you know, testimony through torture, or we shouldn't be led into war under false pretenses, or allow stolen elections to be stolen, and we shouldn't allow Karl Rove and his cronies to take over the Department of Justice and use it as a political weapon to win elections. And that's exactly what they have done. And if they win again, they're going to do it again. And my hope for this administration, if Barack Obama is fortunate enough to win a second term, he needs to clean house and, and 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 reset the moral compass of this country. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna raise one or two other issues, and I know I'm probably talking more than I should. And Jake, if I am, just sit down. He's not <laughs> no, no. talking anymore. But no, I want to ask you, you know, about the Obama administration. So so tell me more about that, actually. Well, all right. Well, there are two things that have happened in 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 his administration that he could shut down 
and and one of them is that David Savage of the New York Times, their legal correspondent, wrote in on January the fifth, two thousand and ten, that the Obama administration sent lawyers into the Supreme Court yesterday, that being January the fourth, two thousand and ten to argue that U.S. citizens do not have a constitutional right not not to be framed, that, that U.S. citizens do not have a constitutional right not to be framed. That was in the case of two black men who spent 25 years in prison for something they didn't do and were suing the prosecutors and investigators for framing them. They got framed just like I did by a felon who struck a deal with the prosecution. If you'll testify the way we want, we will let you go. That kind of stuff shouldn't go on in America. Uh, and President Obama is a better person than that. We know that. And so in this second term, you know, for goodness sakes, let's sw- let's swing at some of these softballs that are floating over home plate. You can knock them out of the park, Mr. Obama. And secondly, right. I was sentenced, when I was sentenced on August the 3rd, the judge added time in prison for matters for which I I was found not guilty. In America today, federal judges can add time to your sentence for matters that you were found not guilty of. That's crazy. Uh, It's it's called acquitted conduct. (laughs) It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You got acquitted of it. How can they give you more time for acquitted conduct? It it is it, the, people don't the, the thing is and you know this they don't people don't want to believe that elections are stolen or we led to war under false pretenses or that we torture people they just don't want to believe that in America that our government would argue that we don't have a constitutional right not to be framed they don't want to believe that in America today as we speak people can be sentenced and are being sentenced to additional prison time for things for which they were found not guilty, but it happens. And those are the, you know, Obama, President Obama can straighten some of this stuff up in the second term. So let's talk about what he could have done so far. I mean, you're headed back to prison on September 11th, and now there's a couple of petitions people can sign if they want, change.org slash pardon Don, or you can get to that same petition through donsiegelman.org, either way. But could, could they have gotten involved in this case? Could they have helped you out? Uh, t- talk to well, me about well, that. Well, yeah, Jake, they, they could have, you know, it's it's hard for me to say. Uh, I, I don't want to be too critical, but I, I've already been critical in lots of different ways. And I don't, I'm just, what I'm trying to do is to, is to, is to hopefully lead our leaders in a way that make them stronger and better leaders. But yes, they could have done something, but they didn't. The, the Department of Justice is still riddled with Karl Rove clones. You remember during that the the hearings when they were when John Conyer was was investigating the firing of these prosecutors because they wouldn't prosecute Democrats. You know, we got testimony from people that were close to Rove who said that he he screened people for the Department of Justice. And they had a litmus test, and you had to pass that test. You had to be a member of the Federalist Society. You had to believe in certain things before you got your appointment. So we've got people in the Department of Justice that are holdovers from the Bush administration, holdovers and and who are beholding to Karl Rove. So, you know, and and plus we have hundreds of judges and and still U.S. attorneys and deputy U.S. attorneys who were all trained under Karl Rove. Now, so, uh, let me yeah. again just clarify something for the audience so they understand. Sometimes, you know, Federalist Society is a legal society. Maybe, maybe, maybe you could make an argument for that. But sometimes they'd ask them if they were pro life or not. So that has nothing to do with anything in regards to their jobs. It's just a political question that they should not be asking at all. So they've got no shame about this. But when it comes to President Obama, he has so many Bush holdovers all throughout his administration. The person who's the head of the Drug Enforcement Agency, a radical right winger holdover from the Bush administration. It is one of the frustrating mysteries of the Obama administration as to why they think that they should continue the Bush administration's policies in any way, shape, or form. But to ask the specific question, I'm sorry, Governor Siegelman, if there's one thing that you would ask of the Obama administration in your case, what would it be? I would ask him to, to, to pardon or commute my sentence, I, I, and I say commute, which means just let me out of jail 
we can deal with the pardon later. If, if, if a pardon is too much for him to swallow at one time, you know, let's just bite off a chunk and, and, and do the commutation. But by doing that, I, what I what I want him to uh, to know, and that's what I want your listeners and readers to and viewers to to pick up on, is by signing this petition, we're sending a message to President Obama that this is wrong. This case is wrong. What happened is wrong. What's going on in the Department of Justice is wrong, and and their injustice in America needs to be straightened out. And that this that it's up to the president to set a moral compass for this country that gets us back on the right course. Yes, uh, that on that issue I couldn't agree more. Unfortunately, they've been a little slow to get there. And uh, I want everybody to also re uh, remember that uh, President Bush commuted Scooter Libby, even though he clearly added a CIA agent. But on his specific charge, he lied about it. It was the, no, no question about it. He didn't hesitate to commute that sentence. But when we have Democratic presidents, they think, oh my God, they'll think I'm political or whatever it is. You know, and they just, uh, it, it's so frustrating to see that the Republicans get away with stuff. And then when we've got innocent people on our side, uh, honestly, this is my opinion, it's not the governor's opinion, that they don't step up uh, for people who they should step up for. All right, Governor Don oh. Siegelman. I want to thank you for joining us on the Young Turks. I want to wish you best of luck and uh, and and you know change.org slash pardon Don and and we'll see if we can make a difference.